God has chosen you and not rejected you. And that, my friend, is great news on this Friday. We're so glad that you're with us on Hope Today. I'm Anna and I'm hanging out with Angela. <laughs> and we've got a powerful story coming up in just a few minutes. So Angela, tell us about it. Oh, I'm telling you, this is one you want to sit tight for. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Every life is important to God. And coming up in just a moment, you're going to meet piano artist Kim Deerdorf. He has an incredible story of being found in a garbage can in Korea when he was just a baby. He was eventually rescued and is now using his story and his life to encourage and inspire others. You'll also be blessed by his beautiful gift of piano playing that will surely touch your heart. Anna, when I hear his story, I am blown away by the power and the choice of living for God. Yeah, and to think about the fact that he was left in a dumpster yes. by a likely his parent, like his parents yes. rejected him. And, you know, I'm just thinking about you at home, you know, there's not many who have been left in a dumpster, but maybe you have felt that rejection mm -hmm. by a significant person in your life, such as a parent, or you have felt that rejection from a friend or from a spouse or somebody along the way. Like rejection has the potential to shut a person down, but we know that when God gets involved, when you draw near to him and you understand his love for you, that his purpose still exists, that he has chosen you to be his, that he is your father, Whoa, you can get up from whatever you have experienced and move on to fulfill that purpose for the kingdom. Yeah, you know, and Anna, the significance of fathers in our lives, we all are very well acquainted with. This Sunday, we actually celebrate Father's Day. And so as Anna spoke, this may be a sore spot for you. This may be a place where you've had hurt and pain, or maybe you've never even gotten to meet your father. We want to take a moment and just pray for you and pray for those of you who are Father. So Anna, would you take a moment and just pray for those who are watching? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Heavenly Father, we first just want to lift up those who are maybe struggling with celebrating this Father's Day. Yes. Lord, we just pray that your presence would wrap around them, that yes. they would feel your perfect love for them, that it would go down deep into the marrow of their bones, God, so that they can truly celebrate that they are loved by a perfect Father in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And we are so thankful for the fathers out there who are doing the work of fatherhood that are are speaking life into their kids who are being intentional about spending time and you know it's fascinating Angela there truly has been studies done for decades talking and showing the importance of fathers, the significance of dads in their kids lives yes. and how it, it really does improve the well-being of that child. It's so critical. Yeah, we can never underplay the role of our fathers within society and within the family. And I think that strength. Today, if you're watching and you're a father and you think, oh, you know, I, I go and pay the bills. I, I work my job and, and get the kids what they need. You are so much more than a paycheck. You are the very essence of their being. They will emulate what you do and how you show up. And so we just declare blessings over you today and we say, Dad, you are significant. Everything you do matters. Well, today we have a beautiful interview here. So let's now go over to Tom, who's with piano artist Kim Deerdorf, as he shares his unbelievable story of being saved and how he's using his life to make a difference. Our next guest has been blessed with an incredible gift of music, but he also has had tremendous challenges to overcome in his young life, you're not going to want to miss his story. He began playing melodies at age three and started writing on the piano when he was just five years old. Today, Kim Deerdorf is quite an accomplished pianist and he's been blessing others with his wonderful music. Kim, it's great to have you with us on Hope Today. Well, thank you so much, Tom. It's, it's an honor to be here. Well, let's, let's go into your story. Sure. Because it is uh, really, in many ways, it seems unique to us. I'm sure others have, have had similar difficulties, but tell us your beginning was very difficult. Absolutely. Um, 
<clears throat> so when I was just a few days old, I was, I was found in a garbage can in Seoul, South Korea. I was taken to an orphanage uh, where I spent the first uh, two weeks of my life in a hospital. They actually thought I might be blind. I had something wrong with my eyes. Um, and then uh, they didn't know when my birthday was, so they gave me a, the birth date of January 1st. And um, four months later, I was adopted by some uh, American parents uh, and with a girl that was also adopted at the same time, she became my sister, mm -hmm. um, I was taken back to Michigan. Okay, so, so you were put in this orphanage, it was run by a, a Christian It group. was, it was yeah. called Holt International. And it was interesting because um, the week that, uh, the time that I was adopted, an, uh, a prominent news media group was shooting a documentary on international adoption. It was kind of new at the time. Mm -hmm. And they happened to shoot the whole trip uh, on my parents' trip over. And um, So what was it like then to uh, grow up in America? You know, again, from a background where you didn't know, uh, you know, you were obviously Korean and you didn't, they didn't right. know. What was that like? Um, it was different. Uh, me and my sister were the only Koreans in our, our, our little town. Um, you would think that the, that beginning, uh, you know, was the beginning to something really nice. And in a lot of ways, of course, I'm very fortunate to have been adopted. But um, I also went through 18 years of an abusive adoption home wow. where I think it, it, my mom in particular, I think she just had a troubled background. She had wounds that never healed. Um, she expressed that how she never really wanted me. And, uh, and every day of my life growing up, I was told how worthless I was and how um, I would never do anything with my life. And that, that um, you know, I, I just, I, I was just, uh, you know, she wished she hadn't adopted me. Uh -huh. And so I would go to bed every night as a child thinking, why would God rescue me from the garbage and put me in this situation in, in a home that, um, they didn't want me. Were they, were they at least outwardly Christian? I mean, did you know about God? Uh, we went to church every, every week. I, I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church. My dad never went to church. Um, he, he never graduated from high school. Uh, he hated every, he worked in a factory for 35 years, hated every day of his life. And, um, but you know, at, at the age of three, uh, I've, i somehow I just felt God's presence over my life. And, I, and I, I'll say that um, being found in, in the garbage is actually one of the greatest blessings that, I'll, that God will ha has ever given me because I realized that I'll never be in a more vulnerable position, more helpless situation. And yet God saw me there and chose to rescue me. And so I have always felt like God's had his hand over my life. Um, at the age of three, uh, we had limited records at home. We had about 15. And I was told that I started playing melodies off records when I was three. Uh, by the time I was five, I started writing things. And the piano for me was, was a way for me to connect to something beautiful. Yeah. The first time I ever played a note on the piano, it just, the, the, the sound and the, the, the tone of, of the instrument, even though it was an out of tune piano, never ever was made in 1900, it was a terrible, terrible piano. It's just, it's just, it just connected with me and it allowed me to feel a sense of God's uh, beauty or something beautiful in my life. At the age of 14, uh, my parents got divorced. Um, my dad went to live in a hotel and uh, my mom didn't want me there, so I became homeless again, basically. I spent uh, a year in boarding academy. I spent a year living with a, a faculty member that took me in. At the age of 18, um, I left home the day after I graduated from high school. Uh, my mom said, you know, uh, either go to community college or go to this Adventist college in, outside of uh, Chattanooga. And she said, uh, if you're going to go there, she says, um, get your stuff ready because we're leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. And we drove all the way to uh, College Dale, Tennessee. She dropped me off. And I was on, on my own. Mm -hmm. the, the bad thing of it was is um, throughout my childhood, I'd never been 
allowed to make any decisions. And so I was really unprepared mm -hmm. f for life. And uh, I was lost. I was completely disoriented yeah, when I got so, to college. So, so here you are, uh, right. having to grow up real quick uh, at school. So where does God begin to enter into this? That's a really good question. So I was taking a class called The Life and Ch Teachings of Jesus. And, um, and even though I'd gone to church all, my whole life, um, something about reading God's word in that particular class, it just, God just spoke to my heart and, you know, and, and he changed my heart. I was, I was hanging out with some not so great friends at college. I mean, they were, were a positive influence. And at that moment, I, I had to tell them that I was making a change in my life, that God was coming into my life and he was setting a whole new direction. Sometimes at what is at least outwardly a Christian school, that can be a hard stand to take it, even. It, it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, then, so then where did God lead you? Did you finish school or did you go on to something I, else? I dropped out of college two and a half years. I, I didn't really have anything that I knew that I wanted to do. Uh, I spent a couple, couple years, um, I mean, I spent a summer in, in uh, Kentucky living with a friend. I got called to Texas to an Adventist college outside of uh, um, Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were starting a recording studio. I was asked to come down there. I spent six months um, just reading books and working at a, a, a place for, um, for the um, abused children of the state of Texas. For six months I did that. Uh, somebody donated $75,000 to the college and I was asked to build a recording studio. So your, your, your reputation was going before you that you were someone who understood music or how'd that happen? I just wanted, I love technology yeah. and recording was kind of somewhat new in, in college uh, campuses yeah. at that mm -hmm. time. And um, the director of music knew that I was interested in, in music and music technology and recording. So he, that's how he invited me and that's how I got started uh, when I, when, um, so I spent three years doing that. I spent a year um, almost starving to death trying to get music projects in Fort Worth and Dallas. Uh, ended up writing music for uh, Del Taco, Bell South, the Dallas Cowboys, this kind of thing. Um, but all through that process, God was just speaking to my heart. He was just, he was just sustaining uh, you know, my life. I mean, there was really hard times uh, during that time. I, I lost, I didn't have enough money to, to stay in my apartment. I had to move, live out of my car. Okay. And uh, So you, you, it's not sounding like we got to the, the real good part yet. I mean, you, you, yet. You, know, you, you know the Lord and everything, right. but where is he taking you? Where is God moving you? You're working there, uh, building out this I, technology I, for music? Yes, and, and while I was doing freelance work in Dallas, I get a call from a gentleman in um, California, Thousand Oaks, California. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to, if I was interested in coming out there and working in their production office in their, in their audio department. Um, and that, that goes through a whole set of, uh, of circumstances that, we'll, that we can go into later. But um, basically I, in, in Dallas, I'd, I'd gotten hooked up with this, this uh, con man who, who took me in and I got in, uh, involved in his dealings. Uh, I actually had a, a warrant out for my arrest because of the, wow. being connected with him. And God delivered me from that whole thing. I went to California. I worked there for five years. I learned um, audio digital recording. It was kind of new at the time. Um, I'd spent a week doing edu ed uh, in education on this one piece of audio software and my first project was a five million dollar uh, animated film after one week and what I realized is that um, I always struggled with my self-worth and self-confidence because of my what I would went through as a child but I realized that God when he gives you an opportunity he always gives you the ability to be successful mm -hmm. and um, and I you know I always had a hard time trusting people or trusting anything. Sure. And um, what I came to the knowledge of is I could always trust God. Mm -hmm. um, he, would never, he never let me down. He has never let me down. And not only that, he's, he's just taught me so much through, um, through different things and working in my life. So where does God take you from there? Uh, what, what does, what, uh, he's moving you along right. here. Right, so five years there, 
I, I get a call from a friend of mine in Orlando, Florida. A new production company was just starting. They needed an audio engineer. I went down and interviewed with them. They had already hired and fired two audio engineers in the first six months of their business. I was the third one that they were interviewing. Uh, I spent a week with them. They offered me the job. I moved to Orlando two weeks later. My first project was a million dollar commercial for Walt Disney World, The Tower of Terror. I had an audit, um, I had a ear infection in my left ear. I couldn't even hear out of my left ear. And, oh and here I'm supposed to be the audio engineer. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, again, again, by the grace of God, by, by God's uh, faithfulness, he, was allowed me, he allowed me to be successful even in that situation. So where was your music at this time? I mean, where, what was God doing with you musically during all this, this period? Well, you know, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a composer. I wanted to be a famous songwriter. I wanted to see my name on a piece of music or on a record so I could tell my my mother that I actually was that I actually was able to succeed, but you know it's just got through God's directing and His prompting and His His humbling of my heart. Um, I was always always able to do music. I was you know I wrote some music from the commercials. I was able to do music production for some of the other productions uh, that I had when I was in Orlando, um, but it wasn't the prominent thing. Uh, audio production. We ended up doing uh, all. The, I ended up doing all the audio work for all the um, exhibits at, Nash, at NASA at the Kennedy Space Center. Oh yeah, and all the theme. There. It's yeah. a great place. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. It was quite a project. So you know, from a little kid coming from the garbage, growing up in nowhere in Michigan, and and being able to do these kind of things, I, th I felt like that was really something. But you know, that was really only the beginning of God teaching me things about my life. So when you reflect on, and we're going to get to more of your story and we're going to have a follow up in, a, in, our, in our next show about your life. We're going to hear some of your great music in a little bit here as well. But when you reflect on God, what was God showing you about himself through all this? A lot of people would look back and say, hey, God, why did you give me this, deal me this bad hand? Right. But what was God showing you about himself? He was showing me that he could, could be trusted, that he, that he was faithful, that whatever his plans for your life, whether it be, um, you know, f positive or, or ha having you go through challenges. I think a lot of it is, it's, you know, when God sends you through the challenge, he's able to, he's able to dis display his glory. He's able to display his, his, his uh, power. And, um, He's also able to, to draw you closer to him as, as being dependent on, on his, his power and not your power. Have you been able to, have you been able to communicate that with to other people? Has God I sure given hope it? so. <laughs> I sure hope so because, you know, I, I learned a lot about, uh, throughout my life, I learned a lot about waiting on God. You know, I didn't, I didn't get married till I was 47. Okay. And, and that's, a, that's a big part of people's lives is, is learning how to wait on God. Yeah. I spent 11 years as a freelancer sitting in my bedroom doing pro outside projects and you learn a lot about patience when you sit in a room by yourself for 11 years yeah. or when you're single for 47 years yeah. and you think, well, life is passing me by. All my other friends are, you know, they've graduated, got professional degrees, got mm -hmm. married, bought a house, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just here struggling. So it's the faithfulness of God. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that is, uh, there are people out there saying, well, I hope I don't have to wait till I'm 47 to get married. Of course, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's God gives us um, the strength that we need that's right. to go through those times. And each, everybody's story is different. And you realize that God's timing is always perfect. And one of the things that I, that's helped me in my life is to, to also realize that if you're following God's leading in your life, there's never a missed opportunity. Well, uh, we're going we're gonna to hear more about your story and what God's been doing uh, in your life in our next, uh, next program. Uh, and, uh, but I'm going to ask you to just be, to share some of your music with us. Oh, absolutely, of course. Uh, so we're just going to take a moment now uh, to uh, just uh, reflect on what Kim has shared already and, uh, and, and think about where God has taken him and where God has taken you. What is God uh, speaking to you through Kim's life? And right now we're gonna hear from Kim. The song is called The Love of God.
What a powerful testimony from a garbage can to abuse to homelessness and loneliness. Kim certainly has proven with his life that truly it may not be good the things happening, but he was able to find a good God whose love satisfied his soul. Anna, that is a powerful man of God. Mm -hmm. He's a living testimony of where God's glory is displayed. And this scripture God laid on my heart during this story. It's from Isaiah 41 verses 9 and 10. I want you to listen closely. There's so much in this where God says, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are mine. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. When we get this revelation that we are chosen by God, that he has not rejected us, no matter what your background is, where you've come from, what you've done, your God, your Father in heaven has not rejected you. David says in Psalm 139, like, where can I go from you? If I go to the heights of the heavens, there you are. If I go into the depths of darkness, there you are. Darkness is as light to you. No matter where you are today, God is with you. He is fighting for you. He wants to draw you close so you can feel his heartbeat. Yes. If you've never received Jesus as your savior, today is your day. Know that our prayer line is here to pray with you, to tell you more about how to start that relationship with Jesus. It's 888-665-4483. We're here for you. All you have to do is call out Jesus Repent of your sins and ask him to be yours. What a glorious, glorious hope that we have in God. Truly, you know, I think about all that he had to overcome and what a testimony his life is, Anna, even as you said. I mean, to go from days old in a garbage can and to now be an accomplished pianist, it is powerful. Listen, you want to stay tuned here on Thursday, June 22nd for part two of Kim's story. It is surely powerful. You know, Anna, I love that he shared that in the midst of it all, it wasn't like this quick turnaround for his life. It right. wasn't like, but it was these hills and these valleys. And you know, I don't know where you are today. If you find yourself on the mountaintop experience and you feel like, man, this is really what life is about. I'm living in my purpose. Or if you feel like you are in the deepest, darkest valley, Kim's story, and more importantly, Jesus's testimony is that all of these things Jesus has overcome. Take heart, my friend. Stay encouraged because God is on the throne. It may not look good. It may not feel good. But the good God we serve is surely to be here for you today and into your future. Every day that we walk this journey, we have a choice just like Kim did to either grab a hold of faith or hold on to fear. I believe today is your opportunity to hold on to faith and declare there is hope today. God bless you.